Good afternoon. My name is Chad Yarbrough. I'm the special agent in charge of the Dallas FBI field office. First and foremost, on behalf of the FBI, I want to begin by expressing my deepest condolences to the victims, to the families and loved ones of those murdered and injured in this vicious attack this past Saturday at the Allen Premium Outlets. We recognize the fear and heartache that occurs when heinous acts of violence are committed and the devastating impact it has on the people and the community. Since our arrival to the scene on Saturday, the FBI has devoted significant resources to assist in the investigation of what occurred in Allen. Those resources include investigative personnel, intelligence, digital forensics, and victim services, just to name a few. The FBI is currently analyzing electronic devices and digital media connected to the suspect at our North Texas Regional Computer Forensic Laboratory. There's still a lot to be done in this investigation, and we will continue to thoroughly review this material and share when the with the investigative team. The FBI's Victim Services Response Team has been deployed uh, with over 20 specially trained personnel to work and collaborate alongside the Allen Police Department, the Texas Department of Public Safety's Victim Services, and the Collin County District Attorney's Office, as well as other state and community organizations to provide essential support and assistance to those impacted by this unimaginable tragedy. Strong, well-established relationships with our law enforcement partners and community members have been indispensable to this response and investigation, and we cannot thank our partners enough for their steadfast commitment and unyielding efforts to help others. As of yesterday, the Victim Services Team and community partners have been able to provide resources and services to over 30 families, which consists to over 100 individuals. And over the past two days, FBI personnel and community partners have escorted close to 1,100 people to retrieve their abandoned vehicles in the parking lots in the vicinity of the shooting. If you were present on Saturday at the Allen Premium Outlets, we encourage you to visit the Family Assistance Center at the Allen Senior Recreational Center at 451 St. Mary Drive here in Allen. In addition, personal effects that, we, that were left outside the retail stores have been collected and can also be retrieved at this location. It will be open today and tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. Victims are not just those who are physically injured, but also those who were present and may be experiencing emotional distress. We ask that you continue to respect the privacy of the victims affected by this tragedy. We are aware of multiple fake online fundraisers that are currently underway for the victims. Please properly vet any charity or fundraiser before donating money to ensure that it reaches the proper victims. And there's a list of those in, uh, properly vetted um, charities on the Allen website. We are also still seeking information from the public. If you are at the Allen Premium Outlets and have information, we ask that you please call 1-800-CALL-FBI. Our focus in the coming days will continue to be providing aid and comfort to our victims, as well as working with our law enforcement partners on the criminal investigation that is ongoing. Our thoughts and prayers continue to be with all those who have been so severely impacted by this terrible tragedy. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Hank Sibley. I am the North Texas Regional Director for the Texas Department of Public Safety. First, I'd like to express the condolences on the part of the state of Texas and the men and women of the Texas Department of Public Safety for the loss of the victims that died in that horrific crime that occurred at the Allen Outlet Mall on Saturday. We cannot begin to fathom the pain and the time it will take to recover from this, but our prayers are with you. Um, I would also like to commend the response on Saturday. The response to the mall shooting was stellar. We are so blessed that an Allen police officer who took the appropriate action did what he did when he did it. He undoubtedly saved countless lives. If he hadn't been there, I think we'd had a much more severe situation. On top of that, the agencies that responded, the local agencies, sheriff's office, other PDs, the fire department, everybody did what they were supposed to do and responded to the scene. From the DPS perspective, we had Texas Highway Patrol troopers on the scene within minutes. 
We dispatched our Texas Rangers to assist with the shooting investigation, and ultimately the Rangers have taken over the lead investigation. In addition, we had our SRT teams, aircraft, and now to this point we have our victim services counselors on the ground. I will tell you that Governor Abbott, through my director, Steve McCraw, reached out immediately and said, whatever needs to be done to support the city of Allen in this horrific time, to do it. All state resources have been committed uh, to this effort. Uh, the Texas Rangers have been tasked and been put in lead this investigation. It's a very large crime scene, very complex investigation spanning multiple jurisdictions. And the Rangers, along with the local law enforcement agency, Allen PD, and our federal partners, particularly FBI and ATF, are working hand in hand to get the answers. You know, many of the answers are still away from getting to, but some things we do know. Um, we have processed the crime scene. As the chief was saying, we've released, and the SAC was saying, we've released the parking lot, 1,100 vehicles. I mean, it was a big scene. We had to clear it, and we've done it in pretty record time. If you think about it, you're only talking less than 72 hours ago this event was occurring. And to be this far down the road, I think, is very commendable on the part of all the parties involved. The cooperation between the agencies has been exceptional, and I think it's a model for the way things should be done in the future. One thing that we, we do know is after we've identified the shooter, and his name has been made public, uh, he's from the Dallas area, so the FBI, Dallas PD assisted. We ran warrants down on his residence, his actual parents' house, and I believe hotel residence, to see what evidence we could glean from that. The FBI has his computers, cell phones, and other evidence, and they're in the process of trying to do digital forensics, as the SAC mentioned, to go ahead and ascertain what type of evidence we can get off of that. The um, shooter had no CCH, no criminal history, so we had no documentable criminal history on him. He was in the U.S. Army, and that's been posted on the media in 2008. He was in basic training. I think early on in basic training, they realized, from what I've seen, that you know he was not a fit for the Army, and so they separated him from the Army, you know, before he got out of the training mode. Uh, there were some questions, you know, about his fitness for duty. That information will be forthcoming later on uh, as we dig into the investigation. Uh, he also had a private security license <coughs> in the state of Texas. Again, he had no criminal history, and um, the license has expired. I understand he worked as a security guard for several firms, but uh, he was not an active security guard at the time of this. When we, he had eight weapons with him. He had three on his person, and he had five in his vehicle. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms has run traces on all the weapons. All of the weapons were legally obtained by the shooter. None of them were stolen, anything else. And now we're running checks on them to see if they were using any crimes. But at this time, we haven't uncovered anything in that regard. Uh, the big question that we're dealing with right now is what's his motive? Why did he do this? Well, the big question is we don't know. That's what the investigation is trying to find out. We do know that he had neo-Nazi ideation. He had patches, he had tattoos, uh, even his signature, you know, verified that. That's one thing we do know. We are trying to get into his computer and on social media and find out, you know, whether he had any, anything that he'd publicized or been out. We're looking around, we're seeing what he was trying to find we looked at and trying to get every information we can. This is the ongoing part of the investigation and we have a, we have a situation that once we figure that out, uh, hopefully we figure that out, and get definitive about it, we can go public with that down the road. To me, it looks like he targeted the location rather than a specific group of people. He was very random in the people he killed. It didn't matter the age, uh, same race or sex. He just shot people, and which is horrific in itself. Um, as I said before, the investigation is ongoing. We're going to, the Texas Rangers, FBI, ATF, and Allen PD, as well as any other agencies assisting us, are going to leave no stone unturned to try to identify this motive and try to find out whatever we can. At this time, we think he acted alone. There's no indication he had any Confederates or anybody working with him. But we're also keeping an open mind in that regard, too, because you never know. Um, as the FBI SAC mentioned, our victim services, the Texas, state of Texas victim services, working hand in hand with the city of Allen and the FBI to try to assist these victims to get on the road to getting their lives back to normal. You know, so we're doing what we can and the information that you need to contact is there. There's also the state of Texas has a crimes victim compensation fund and we're also trying to plug the people, the victims into that 
to maybe to help them get their lives right. Okay, with that, uh, that's all I'm gonna brief on right now. Again, the investigation ongoing, but I will take a couple of questions. That, sure. Would you consider this an act of domestic terrorism considering his racist ideology? Well, it's too early to say that for sure. You know, I mean, obviously, circumstantially, you might say something like that, but we need to get more into his ideology, get into his social media, and see more than we have. I have a follow-up. Can you confirm that there is a website out there that he has posted the pictures of him with the swastika tattoo and some of his um, notes and his ideology? I, I know there's a website out there. I haven't personally seen it. I know the FBI and the Texas Rangers are looking into that. And that's something, that's another part of the investigation we're looking at. Director, can I ask if uh, at this point there's been any kind of manifesto or anything like that that you have found in his belongings? Not to my knowledge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You would have said that he worked in private security games before. Did he ever work at the Allen Greenhouse? Uh, not to my knowledge. I don't have the name of the companies he worked for, and I don't know if he worked at that location. He hasn't worked in the security business for a while. But we don't know, you, you don't, we don't treat I do not know 100% where he worked. Yes, sir, Roger. Do you have, uh, have you been able to build a timeline of how long the shoot the event, the event lasted and, and whether or not um, all of the victims were indeed shot by this suspect? So, so I believe the event was like three to four minutes from the time that the first shots were fired. I think it was 337 or something like that. And we're looking at... Uh, uh, I think within three or four minutes, the Allen PD officer had neutralized the suspect and the shooting stopped. And there's no indication anybody else was, was shooting besides him and the officer. Given what he was posting on social media, was he on law enforcement's radar at all? Uh, not to my knowledge. Last question, and we'll uh, defer to the American hand up. Uh, yes, Matt Dublin, NBC News. I think I'm probably echoing the public here. Is there any way that you think you can protect the public from the next mass shooting if anyone, a suspect like this man, who we know was discharged from the military over mental health concerns, can go out and purchase an armed load of firearms? Well, that's a very difficult question. And, uh, that's the one everybody's asking. Uh, he was in the military in 2008, and the recording, reporting requirements were a lot different back then than they are now. And even if he couldn't have purchased these firearms legally, he probably could have obtained them illegally or used some other vehicle, literally a vehicle, to perpetrate something similar. You know, it's uh, when you have people with mental illness, if, this, if it turns out that this gentleman has that, uh, when you have that situation, they will find a way. So, Does it make your job harder? Uh, sometimes, yes. Sir, sir are, you, are you saying that he could not have gone into a licensed dealer and purchased a weapon? No. No, no, he, he legally, every weapon he purchased was legal. So. You, you can, thank you, sir. You thank you. We've got to move right. on now. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, so moving into the next phase of our brief here, Sergeant Tony De La Cerda will step forward and uh, translate what you just heard into Spanish. So give us just a second and he'll, be, he'll begin. All right, that was the update from Texas DPS taking a few questions and their first update held since Saturday when the shooting did happen. So the shooter with neo-Nazi leanings who killed eight people at a suburban Dallas shopping mall brought eight legally purchased guns to the scene, apparently chose his victims at random and was shot dead by police within four minutes. That is according to Texas DPS. They released that information as you saw during that news conference. The Allen police officer who shot and killed 33-year-old Mauricio Garcia ending Saturday's attack acted heroically and saved quote countless lives through his quick action. Hank Sibley, the regional director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, saying that at the news conference, he said the officer is still trying to process what happened and is not ready to have his name made public just yet. Quote, if he hadn't have been there, I think we'd have had a much more severe situation. 